And here is a more challenging problem for those who like to be challenged. Here we have a, a bowl. We have an object with mass m against the side here at the very top and assume that to be vertical. And then, of course, the mass is going to slide down. And the question is, when the, when the mass gets to the bottom of the bowl, what will be its final velocity? Now, what makes it a little bit more difficult is that there's friction along the side. Because if there was no friction on the side, then we could say the velocity at the bottom of the hill, since there's nothing else going on then, v final at the bottom of the hill would be equal to the square root of 2gh. And the h, of course, would be the radius of the bowl, so it would be the square root of 2gr. And that would be the end of the problem. That would be simple. But because there's friction here, that will not be the answer. We're also going to lose energy because this is sliding. And now notice that the friction force is constantly changing because the angle is constantly changing. So that makes it a little bit more complicated of a problem. The approach is still going to be the same. We know that energy initial is going to be equal to energy final. And we can set up the, the problem the way we always do is the work input plus the initial potential energy plus the initial kinetic energy is going to be equal to the final potential energy plus the final kinetic energy plus any energy lost due to friction. And of course, we're going to have some of that because there's friction here. No work input because nothing being pushed while this is sliding down, so this is equal to zero. Potential energy initial we have because the block starts up at this height. Of course, the height is equal to the radius of this bowl, so this would be mgr for the potential energy. Now, the system starts at rest, so this block is not moving, so this, that would be zero kinetic energy. At the bottom, when the block reaches the bottom, it reaches its lowest height, so this would be zero for potential energy. The block will be moving, so it has kinetic energy, one half mv final squared, and that, that's of course the v final we're looking for. And finally, energy lost. We'll just write it as energy lost because how do we figure that out? Well, what we're going to do here is we're going to take a split second moment here when the block is right at that position. When the block is at that position, we know we have the force of gravity, which is mg. And since that's on an incline at that moment, it's going to have the perpendicular component and the parallel component of this uh, weight or of the force of gravity. So this would be mg times. Now, is that a cosine or is it the sine of theta? This theta right here. Notice if the block is over here, then this will be a very small angle, and then this will be angled like this, and this will be a small angle. So it looks like this angle and this angle will have to be the same. This is theta, and so we call this mg times the cosine of theta, and so this becomes the mg sine of theta, which is just in reverse of what it would be if we had an inclined plane. It's just because the geometry is drawn a little differently here. All right, so then we have the normal force pushing back, like we always do. The surface pushes back with a normal force. And so this, this should be a little straighter, like that. And the normal force is equal, of course, to mg sine theta. And of course, uh, that's opposite in direction, equal in magnitude, but opposite in direction. And then finally, the friction force will be in the opposite direction from the motion, so it'll be in this direction right here. Let me use purple for that. So we have the friction force right here, force friction, which is equal to the normal force times mu, which will be equal to mg sine theta times mu. So now we have the friction force. Now we have to figure out the energy lost because of the friction. So since the friction force changes constantly as the angle changes when it's sliding down, so we have to find a way to express that. Well, what we can do is we can say, a small amount of energy is lost, a DE, or maybe we can write it as a DW. A small amount of work is done to overcome the friction, which then means a small amount of energy is lost, and that is going to be equal to when the block moves a very, very small amount of distance. And of course, that means it moves through a very small angle of d theta, very small angle of d theta, and then the distance covered is the arc length right here, and so the distance covered, let's call it a small amount of dx if you want to. So we say the small amount of dx along the, the uh, edge of this bowl is going to be equal to an r d theta. So that's a small amount of distance covered. And if we then multiply the friction force, mg sine theta, times the distance traveled dx, which is r d theta, 
then we have the force times distance form. Remember, work is force times distance, so it would be friction force times the distance traveled. So here we can say that this is going to be equal to mg sine theta times mu, that is the friction force times the distance traveled, which would be r d theta, that's the arc length along the path, and that's when we just move a very tiny small amount. And then, of course, remember that we also have to multiply times the cosine of the angle between them, but since the friction force is in this direction and the, the uh, displacement is in that direction, it's exactly 180 degrees. And so that would mean that the cosine of 180 degrees is a minus 1. And so we know that the minus simply signifies that we're losing energy because we're doing work against friction. So we're good there. So now we have to figure out how much total energy is lost which then, of course, would be the sum of all those little dw's that we need to add. And, of course, when we sum up a whole bunch of dw's, that's like integration. So that means that the work done, which is equal to the energy lost, is equal to the integral of all the dw's, which is equal to the integral of this quantity right here, which is mg sine theta mu times r d theta. Now, what is varying here? As this thing is sliding down, the angle is varying. It goes from 0 to pi over 2 or from 0 to 90 degrees. So we can then put the limits of integration in. This is going to go from theta equals 0. Uh, yeah, I'll write that. Theta equals 0 to theta equals 90 degrees. Now 0 is kind of small. Let me make, make it bigger like that. All right. Now also notice that inside that integral sign, we have the mass, which is constant, g, which is constant, mu, which is constant, and r, which is constant. All this can come out of the integral sign. So this will be equal to mg mu r times the integral of sine of theta d theta. And of course, we're integrated from theta equals 0 to theta equals 90 degrees, or pi over 2, which is equal to pi over 2. All right, what is the integral of the sine? Well, I know that the derivative of the sine is cosine, which means the integral of the sine is negative cosine. So this is equal to mg mu r times the negative of the cosine of theta evaluated from 0 to 90 degrees. Okay, what is the cosine of 90 degrees? Well, that's 0, and the cosine of 0 is 1. So, we can say 0 degrees, of course. And so that means this is equal to mg mu r times a minus. Well, how should I do that? Let me just put the minus in front of all this stuff. So I'll put the minus in front. There, we get it out of the way. So now we take the cosine of 90 degrees, which is 0, minus the cosine of 0 degrees, which is 1. And of course, the minus times the minus 1 gives us a positive 1. And so this is equal to mg mu r. So that is the total amount of energy lost by this object sliding down the bowl right here. So now we can go ahead and plug that in here. So now what we have is we have mgr is equal to 1 half mv final squared plus the energy loss, which is mg mu r. Then, of course, the next thing we can see is that notice there's an m in each term, so the m's cancel out. We can then move this over here, and so then we have gr minus gr mu. I exchanged r and the mu. Being over here becomes minus, and that's equal to 2, or not 2, but 1 half v final squared. I'm now going to multiply both sides of the equation by 2, so the 2 will go over here, and I'm going to pull out a g and a r, so this will be 2gr times 1 minus mu, and that is equal to v final squared. And finally, I'm going to turn the equation around, take the square root of both sides, and see what we get. Let me go over here. So we have v final is equal to the square root of 2gr times 1 minus mu. Now that should look familiar again. Again, r is equivalent to the height of the drop. So you can think of this as 2gh. In this case, it's 2gr. And of course, if there was no friction, the answer would be 2gh or 2gr. But since it was friction, we have to decrease it by 1 minus mu, by that factor. And uh, since I didn't give you any numbers, this is a good answer right here. We don't need to plug in the numbers in. That would be the final answer for the velocity of the mass as it slides on a bowl 
when there's friction involved. And that's how you do that problem.